Okay. Good afternoon. I hear that Oakland's in the house today. Woohoo! <laughs> Bravo. It's incredible to, to have been here today and the energy and the, the opportunity to make change in government is, it's really an amazing opportunity and we feel blessed. So um, I just wanted to start with our story began about two years ago when we started thinking about the Code for America Fellowship. And the city was really reeling and this is a story that many local governments and governments across the country have grappled with. But we were reeling with back to back, year after year, multi-million dollar budget deficits. We had slashed our staff by about 25% over the last 10 years. We had lost, um, my son just waved to me. This is why we're doing this, is to, to, to make change for the future. Um, uh, we had slashed core services, including police. We had eliminated staff training, and we had deferred maintenance on our critical systems and, and uh, upgrades for many, many years running. Um, those are the kinds of choices that governments have had to make over the last couple of years, but those choices have had a huge impact. Uh, our systems were outdated, they were manual, they were cumbersome, um, our processes were paper-based, people were, you know, running documents around the city um, by hand. We had fewer staff to carry a heavier load, and because of the lack of training and the eliminated training, our skill sets of our staff were not keeping pace. Meanwhile, the public demand for service had only accelerated, and so you had um, mobile devices and apps that just have, with dizzying speed, have, have changed the playing field. But cities were really struggling, and Oakland was very much struggling two years ago with how we were gonna get, meet that demand of 24-7 service delivery. So that's the situation. We knew that we could no longer do more with less. That's an insane idea, that we're gonna do more with less. We needed to figure out how we were going to actually change the game and, and what kind of fresh approach we could use. So it was time for game change. Code for America came along as an opportunity for us to embrace technology and the, the shiny cool apps are really cool. But it's really what we wanted to do is use it as an opportunity to harness the technical sector learnings of the approaches to problem solving um, and lean startup and, and iterative processes as a way of re-engineering our processes. So taking a look from the inside. And I think what's really key here is focusing on the people. So on the public side as well as the staff side, can we create a solution that's going to help both? And then partnering with our incredible community. So a shout out to Eddie Tejada and Steve Spiker and the Brigade and Code for Oakland. <laughs> We're, we're truly blessed to have a community that cares about its community, cares about local government, wants to make change, and is innovative. So we took on the public record system, um, and we, because, it, for a number of reasons. One, it's a core city function to, to fulfill public records requests. It also addresses a fundamental value, which is transparency and accountability of the government to the people that we serve. We wanted a project that would impact all departments because we wanted to change the culture of how we do business in the city. Not more with less, but better service. Um, and then we knew that it was a project that affects many governments and so the redeployability was very attractive. So a public record is a document which in this day and age could be a text, me text message or an email or any kind of document that's related to the conduct of the public's business. And the intent is to keep the public's business public. Do the business of the people in the light of day and ensure that the government is accountable to the people that pay our salaries. Pretty simple idea, pretty complex in reality. Um, we received just last year alone about 2,500 public records requests. They came in many formats scattered throughout the city. We had a gentleman this summer before we launched the, the uh, app. We had a gentleman that made requests to at least five different agencies who then each had to ask three or four or five different people where was the document. He got the same document five times, but he wasted 25 people's times just duplicating effort and, and ha uh, having a scramble around because we couldn't track. So it was a public problem, um, difficult to initiate a public records request. People felt like they would ask for information and they, it took forever for them to get anything. They had no idea what happened. They would send an email and then it would just go into a black hole. And it was a government problem. Witness the beleaguered public employee. Um, <laughs> uh, so we had the res legal responsibility to respond to public records, but we didn't have the systems or the processes or the tools to do it well. So it was frustrating both for the users and for the government. 
So we focused on three key goals. We wanted to fix the system, change our culture, and serve the public. And we focused, the system focuses on, as I said, both sides. So it's a web portal that people can enter requests. And then there's a shared view of those requests, which Chris will show you in a bit, where you can see what the status of the request is, who else might this have uh, gone to that's helping in the process, what the status is. Um, the whole process is transparent. And we have now a management tool so that we can see what are we putting out there. Key bonus, transparency. Introducing record track. Thanks. Hi, I'm Chris, and on behalf of the Oakland Fellows, two of which are in the audience right now, Richard Agarwal and Sheila Dugan, I'd like to introduce you to Record Track, a better way to find public records. And in a nutshell, what this app is, is a way to view past and present requests, create new ones, and then a way to manage the response to those, to those requests. Um, Let's say, for example, there is a big resolution uh, that the city council uh, passed an ordinance on, and it happened a couple of weeks ago. I wasn't able to go. That's a dog park or something, a really, really important uh, public process, right? Um, one of the things that sets this app apart from its predecessors is the ability for anyone to go in and search for existing information. So in this case, um, I can go in and search meeting minutes and find out and find if someone's asked for them already, find information um, without even having to submit or create a new request. Um, but let's just say the information hasn't already been requested. All I have to do is fill out a simple web form. Now, it's simple, but it's pretty smart. And this is my favorite part of the presentation. So if you're going to pay attention to one slide, this is probably it. Um, we did research. We did a lot of user research early on. And it turns out that the city of Oakland gets a lot of information requests for information it just doesn't have. Birth certificates, death certificates are great examples. Those are all held at the county seat. And what we did is we, all we did was we inserted just a little bit of a feedback loop. Right? So anytime a requester searches for information for a certain number of keywords like birth or death, certificate, marriage, license, all those kinds of things, right? Um, we just put up a notification that says, the city of Oakland doesn't have these right here, but you can go over here to find that information. And we actually, we rolled out this feature a couple of months ago. And since we rolled it out, the city of Oakland has gotten zero requests for these information. Think about that for a second in terms of both the requester, the responder, and other agencies, and the impact that has. But let's go back to our example. So anytime I submit a request, and let's say it hasn't been requested, and the city's probably going to have it, when I submit a request, it goes automatically to the department. I'm going to go just on your side. <laughs> um, it goes automatically to the city department, who's responsible for responding to that request. And there's a live queue that they can look at and see and get access to at any time of day. And an entire organization has access to this. And just like when I submitted the request, there was an easy form to fill out. As a city employee, I have an easy way to respond to these requests. Um, I can add a record, a note, ask a question of the, of, the, of the requester to clarify something, and even close out the request. But more than that, there's envelope information about the request. So I can figure out, what's the status of this request? Who's looked at it? Where has it been? Why was it routed to me? And on top of that, the requester has access to all this information as well. So they can find out what's going on. It's not stuck in a black hole anymore. And when anybody in the city responds, I'll go back over here to be my trusted little requester. As a requester, I get an automatic notification. Anytime anything gets uploaded, changed to, this, to, the, to my request. So I get an email notification. I can click in, and I get immediate access to what, I'm, to, to what I've asked for, really at the speed of the web, which is a term I just made up. <laughs> so right now, I'm proud to say that 
all departments in the city of Oakland are using this. Um, we have hundreds of live requests. And at the end of the day, I saved my obligatory cheesy PowerPoint slide till now. <laughs> but we, what we took is a black hole system where people are just throwing in requests and no one knows what happens to them. Sometimes you get them back, sometimes you don't, just don't, don't know what happens, right? To changing it to, and I I'm, I'm really want to thank Ben Balta for really setting up the pins for us to knock us down, but changing this into a conversation between people. And it really talks about or begins to think about what the real impacts of this are. It's had a huge impact on the city of Oakland. It, this project has really delivered on all of our expectations and more. It's helped us break through silos, not only within the city departments, but with, between the public and, uh, and the city. We're more efficient. All those requests that we had to say, sorry, we don't have those records, those staff can do other things. So it's more efficient. It's more streamlined. It's more accountable. The entire conversation is happening in public and it's viewable so that everybody's clear about what was responded to and when. And it's been helping us make data-driven de data decisions. And so when we start to see a pattern of, hey, you know, a lot of people, and this has been true in the past, when people were asking for salary data, as soon as I posted it up on the website, I've had no more requests for salary data. We knew that if there were lots of things that had a high public interest, and they were being asked by, through the public record system, that would be great information to put on our new open data platform. Put it out on the web, put it out so that people can have 24 seven self-service. And that frees up limited city staff to really be effective on the, on the things that they can do day to day. But most of all, it's really changed perspectives. So city employees got an opportunity to see change on a startup time frame. I don't remember the last time we had an impact in a year, less than a year project, um, and we're able to take it from start to finish and have line staff and management and uh, electeds all pulling in the same direction. It's had a huge impact in that way. <clears throat> but it's also, most importantly, changed the, pr the frame from an antagonistic relationship to a collaborative one with the public. And ultimately, that is what I loved what, what um, the mayor said earlier about if we can measure the trust of the public in government, we're really making change. And last, night, last slide here, but I, I just want to do a poll. So how many people in the audience here either live in or work for a municipality that has a mandated public records yet? Hint, most all, most all of you should be raising your hand right now. That's great. It's great news because we built an app for you. <laughs> <laughs> we built this to be redeployable. Um, it's a generic process, and there are some tweaks, but you can reuse it, and I encourage you to do so. At the end of the day, the requester requests something, right? Someone responds to that one request, and you, actually, you get to reach everyone. I'd like to thank you, and please share and check out recordtrack.com. It is live. Thanks.